too much since series 10 where it had a couple of niche uses but in terms of having you know a tailwind setter which is mainly what it was useful for at the time there are a lot of options especially things with prankster versus using that gale wings ability which which was nerfed uh, two generations ago but instead calyrex and indeedy is going to be the lead here facing off against calyrex and talon flames so interesting to see both of the calyrex on the field and possibly a trick room or uh, sorry possibly a follow me but a tailwind so you're really gonna have to try and see who's moving so much you know who gets to go first and i mean the i think the most important question is that we know that the calyrex shadow um from caitlin is is not sash it's actually specs so if the opponent's uh calyrex shadow is actually sash um i i do think the caitlin will be potentially losing their calyrex shadow just turn one because you have tailwind happening and because of psychic terrain it's not like you you probably can um go with the priority of gale winds yeah absolutely follow me coming out from the indeedy though first thing possibly trying to stop an astral barrage here tailwind though from this talon flame actually a nice choice to have as a tailwind user because it is flying it is not affected by that psychic terrain however the astral barrage is going to do a ton of damage like you said with those choice specs into the calyrex here should possibly be enough to knock it out it brings it down to its focus sash so an important piece of info to have and then possibly roberta they can go for their own astral barrage and knock out caitlin's uh caitlin's calyrex and get an important important boost right out of the gate. It is enough to knock out the Calyrex, but not enough to take out the Talon Flame brings it very, very close. Yeah, that was a lot of damage um, done. And yeah, Sash Calyrex is one of the scariest thing. This is not um, obviously bad for, for Caitlyn. There's still Tailwind. Um, and yeah, the follow me is a little bit annoying, but I believe you could just, you don't even have to max right now. Um, as long as you don't, you could EQ and this will be actually pretty good too. Yeah, I think even EQ or Rock Slide, Earthquake or Rock Slide could be really useful. Earthquake, you're not worrying too much about that miss there, but uh, Rock Slide, you could possibly get some sort of flinch. Either way, like you said, this Landorus has plenty of ways to avoid dealing with the Follow Me, so this Indeedee might have to find something else that it can do. But instead, Dynamax this turn, so it will be a single target move either way, depending on what kind of move it goes for, whether that be a Max Quake, a Max Rockfall, a Max Airstream. Oh my goodness, actually, I'm sorry, it's the Talon Flame. I was so anticipating this to be the Landorus. Yeah, I was in shock that Talonflame at 12 HP mm. was the dynamo. I do think this is actually really good. You know, yeah, you get the max air stream guarantee. You can you get a uh, but I think they did one for spending force. And yeah, yeah, I think Talon might might be dead in this turn. Oh wait, no, you have EQ. So EQ Nox, this is actually gonna be huge. I'm not sure if EQ Nox though. Yeah. The, yeah, the EQ did not get, the Earthquake did not get that full knockout onto the Ndidi with that max airstream. That Ndidi also showing that it is carrying a berry here, which is going to be able to use to regain some health. That Citrus Berry is the item of choice. Expanding Force will be used, getting that double target thanks to that Psychic Terrain and being able to knock out that max, uh, that Dynamax Talon Flame. So now the Dynamax for Kaylin is off of the field. So you have to wonder if that was really the right move, but looking at it only having one Pokemon left, Caitlyn is leaving a pretty interesting op option open here. It's just a Zacian. So Zacian isn't a Pokemon that can Dynamax, as we all very well know, as much as I think some Zacian players wish that it could. And Lapras is the Pokemon that Roberto is able to send out here for their partner for Ndidi. Yeah. So Telwin is still in place. Depending on how the Lando is called, Lando could be now faster than the Ndidi. Um, and I don't really like the sub play from Caitlyn right, right here. Just covering for maybe a protect or just, you know, if, if Lapras decides not to Dynamax for some reason. Yeah, absolutely. If that Lapras possibly just tries to go for something like an Icy Wind, maybe slow down if it is carrying that move. Oftentimes you don't see it because they're running Freeze Dry for opposing Pokemon like Kyogre. Uh, and even then, if you go for a Protect with the Zacian, then you can go for something like an Earthquake, whereas you can't go for that really with a Substitute because then you break your own sub. Indeedy, though, is going to possibly be able to go for something like that Follow Me if it's worried about a Zacian going for any sort of uh, attacking moves. But... I'm gonna I'm gonna make a call this time that it's a Gigantamax Lapras, but I was wrong last time, so I'm not gonna force it until I see this Pokemon. Okay, the Gigantamax <laughs> Lapras has come out. I 
I've been wrong in a couple of different Hatterene series. I've made a couple of incorrect Dynamax calls. So last thing I want to do in the final round of the day is jinx myself with this Lapras able to come out. And DD actually using Ally Switch, revealing an interesting move for this final round, swapping the places between itself and Lapras so that these moves could change. Zashin using a substitute here. Not going to worry too much about the uh, position changes for those Pokemon. And Rock Slide also not going to worry too much about that. The Rock Slide not being able to get the KO into indeed the actually is a little bit unfortunate. And the Rex Finan actually going into Station. Um, but I think uh, Roberto, they could have hide the ally switch uh, in this case. I think it was showing it a little too early in my opinion. But regardless, this is a really, really good turn. The Rex Finan actually didn't even break the sub. And uh, to be quite honest, like, you could read the follow me or the ally switch. You're, this is still really, really good for Caitlyn. Yeah, it is indeed able to go for a follow me this turn because now it has revealed those ally switches. It is a bit of a mind game on your 50-50 of who you target. So it makes decisions a little bit more difficult. Behemoth Blade, though, from Zashin is going to be able to do a ton of damage into either one of these Pokemon. Into this Ndidi will be plenty to get the last few pieces of HP to knock it out. And so that Ndidi is no longer going for follow me shenanigans. Not that the Landorus really matters all too much as it goes for Rock Slides, but Rock Slide, not the most accurate move, and it is not gonna love taking a G-Max Resonance in return for missing that rock slide and that is enough to knock Landorus out so now we have Zashin sitting behind a sub versus the rest of the Pokemon on Roberto's side yeah um I believe that we probably will be seeing the Seishin coming out yep and this is a little of a tougher spot um because Caitlyn will have to decide is Seishin gonna protect and you can safely go after the Lapras but Bell is set up uh, you're not gonna KO either of those Pokemons unless there is no uh, bulk in that station. Yeah, and that Zayshin is going to have to make that choice pretty quickly, going for a Behemoth Blade here. Again, it, it is a pretty tough move to deal with, but having that GMAX Residence, having that Aurora Veil able to do a ton of mitigation, this still will be a two-hit knockout onto the Zashin on Roberto's side of the field, who is going to be going for its own Behemoth Blade, trying to break that substitute on the Zashin that's already dealt some damage from the GMAX Resonance, so it is going to be pretty easy to break it with really any move at this point, uh, and it's going to allow for this Lapras to come in, possibly with another max hailstorm or a max geyser like a max geyser here and do a good chunk of damage onto the zashian now that it is away from its substitute and the main thing you want to do is you want to get it under 25 percent of its hp so it can't set another one uh which is really tough to do when you're only able to take so much damage out with that lapras who doesn't seem to be all that strong of a physical or of a special attacker Absolutely. And now it's another 50-50, right? Is Seishin going to protect? Is Lapras going to be the one protecting? Uh, is Lapras going to reveal potentially Parish Sun? Uh, we don't know the sets from Roberto's side. And it's a little tricky. So, Caitlyn opting with the B-Blade. I think either Caitlyn's Seishin is just way more, like, faster. Or uh, the speed ties were on, on her favor. But this is actually really good. Um, maybe they, uh, Roberto misses Hydro Pump. It does actually miss this turn, like you said. So now it is a really tough kind of end game here. You can see what Caitlyn was going for by taking care of the Zashin. It is a safer play, I think, in my opinion, than going for the Lapras. Because that Lapras, like you said, it's going to be going for a Hydro Pump in the rain, which is going to have a chance to miss. Sacred Sword, though, not enough to knock out. So you really are hoping for a crit here and a hit with this Hydro Pump that is going to go into the Zashin. It's going to be, I think, so close to getting all of this damage. It is enough to get that knockout. So that means Roberto is going to be able to take game one in in this best of three so a really huge last turn making sure that you are able to survive those hits from that zashan yes uh that was really close game because if caitlin had actually crit with sacred sword that lapras was uh, potentially dead i also will be very curious how many turns of resonance was left because if that was the last one maybe uh caitlin could have protected bell is off and then you get to Take it, might, it probably could have potentially KO it. A little bit harder to guess about that. But yeah, otherwise, really good adjustments uh, from both sides. I, I really, really like how Caitlyn was like, you know what, you're not going to protect your station. I'm just going to kill attacking it. I'm going to ignore this Lapras for now. Um, really good adaptations, and she almost brought it back.
Oh, absolutely. It was very, very close at that end. You know, if you go for that 50-50, the Zacian was the perfect Pokemon to target. You possibly have to hope for a Hydro Pump miss, which is, again, not the most accurate move. You got it once. There's always a chance you can get it again. That is the difficulty with the odds in Pokemon as you move from game to game. Uh, you already saw the multiple Rock Slide misses that were pretty uh, crucial kind of mid-game. It would have been really nice to just get that extra damage onto that Lapras kind of during the mid-game, a couple of turns in, as it was using that, uh, as it was in its Gigantic max form i think one thing i'm interested to see is what the dynamax option is going to be for kate because it was that very low hp talon flame and now i'm curious to see if that is going to be something that she changes up against her mat against roberto because you know it's it's not a pokemon i expected to see dynamax and it definitely played its part as it as a Dynamax user for the one turn, it was able to get that max airstream off, but you have to wonder if that continues to be her strategy or if they bring that Landorus with the hope to Dynamax it in that next game. Absolutely. Um, it looks like we are seeing some changes already uh, from Caitlyn. Uh, I, I, I don't... I'm not sure. I mean, maybe playing the screen battle is worth it because I think Roberto, they will always almost always bring in Didi um, and Lapras. That's the core of that team. And then Calyrex Shadow revealing that he has Sash. There's nothing stopping uh, Roberto from just doing the same potential lead. It was a really strong league, uh, lead for, for them. Yeah, and I think that hyper-offensive lead from both players really kind of played into Roberto's favor because he had that focus sash. So it definitely makes uh, Kate have to change her uh, her plans a bit more going forward because now you know that you need at least two hits onto that Calyrex to do enough damage to knock it out, whereas you can only take one with your Calyrex. So a little bit more of a mind game. I think the leads, like you said, are going to be very different here. And Didi Zacian will actually be the lead for Roberto. So he is. Uh, they are going to be bringing... A really interesting difference, but still that restricted plus and DD combination. Whereas Grimmsnarl and Landorus will be the choice for Kate. Intrepid Sword Boost not going to matter too much because of the Intimidate coming out from the Landorus. And this Ndidi is possibly going to be able to aid its partner with a couple of good follow me's. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right now this is really, really good um, lead for for Caitlyn, like getting the Intimidate already. Uh, potentially bringing Zapdos or even maxing uh, Proton Sensation. The station probably doesn't really want to stay in. I think it would be a little discreet, especially because you you know you can you're gonna have my, a neutral and there's a reflect. So this is actually already looking really good uh, for Caitlyn turn one. Yeah, absolutely. I love this lead. I love this change from her. I think it was the exact thing she needed to do to put out more offensive pressure while also having a bit more bulk. And a Dynamax Landorus is the perfect thing to put in front of a Zacian. It is probably the one Pokemon it wants to see the least, save for maybe something like a sword stance to Groudon at that point. Indeedy going to be using Follow Me, so trying to take any attacks from this Dynamax Landorus who is going to be putting out some major pressure. Grimstarrow going for a Reflect getting that boost to their physical defenses against a really strong physical attacker like Zacian. Zacian going for a behemoth blade right out of the gate, showing that it's going to be able to at least keep this pressure on, even if there is a reflect on the field. Grimmsnarl not loving taking that, but that reflect is huge because it means it is able to not get knocked out from that behemoth blade, while a max quake into this Zacian, or into this Ndidi, forgive me, is going to be able to do a ton of damage, just bringing it down to the bottom 25% of its HP and getting a really nice special defense defense boost as well yeah and you know, once again say so this is still a really good turn for both players uh caitlin just preparing for the end game of caliric shadow in the back lando cool easily just go for another either max ray or a um or a max ray stream just to like make lando a little faster but there's a high chance that grim is gonna be dying here yeah, this Grimstone probably not going to be able to survive something like another Behemoth Blade, but it could possibly get up something like a Light Screen if it really chooses to do so, especially with a Calyrex uh, Shadow Rider in the back. It's not going to love throwing out its Astral Barrages into a Light Screen versus, you know, just having that Reflect up. We've seen a lot more Grimstone not run... Um, 
not run Thunder Wave, which is something that we saw a little bit in a couple different formats. And Didi going for uh, Follow Me once again, just trying to take the uh, attention away from its partner Zacian, so Zacian can keep firing off these Behemoth Blades. And Behemoth Blade will be going into the Grimmsnarl, who was not able to get a light screen up this turn. So makes it a little bit easier for the Pokemon for the back for Roberto, who are special attackers, to get some pretty heavy damage off. But it does mean this Landris is going to be able to knock out this pesky in Didi and finally allow it to focus a bit more onto this Zacian and that is it's really its main target with its final turn of Dynamax. Yeah, now obviously we could see a potential maybe uh, Saptor or Station. Station being the choice of bringing this time. And I think the, the Lando could just max her stream or in general like just max Quaking because depending on what the not restricted mom that Roberto bro, knocking out the Station is very possible in this turn and this is an AV Lando, so if it's another special attacker, AV Lando is just going to be fine. Yeah, and this Calyrex is a special attacker, that is for sure. Zashin as well comes in for Kate as the partner Pokemon. We have three Restricteds on the field right now, and Landorus acting as strong as some of them, especially in this Dynamax form. So getting that Intrepid Sword Boost is really nice because you are at plus one, whereas the Zashin on Roberto's side is not. It is at neutral thanks to that Intimidate from the uh, Landorus right on turn one. So Landorus here probably going to have to decide which Pokemon is its bigger threat. We saw that the Zashin was was only able to take 50% from through reflect from the Zacian's behemoth blade in the prior game. Yeah, and now we see an Astro Barrage. Um, Astro Barrage rarely kills either of those Pokemons. Uh, and I do think that Caitlyn's station is just faster um, than than Roberto's. This is like three three speed ties winning, so I'm pretty sure now I can say that Station is a uh, the faster one. And yeah, exactly. And, and this is actually a pretty good play. I don't think, yeah, Lando shouldn't die to this and uh, shouldn't get knocked out of this. And this is good because now you you also have the speed uh, advantage, the extra speed advantage uh, on Lando's side. Yeah, that extra airstream able to take that one last piece of HP from the uh, Calyrex that the Zacian was able to bring down with the Behemoth Blade. So Zacian now able to put on a lot more pressure onto the Zacian on Roberto's side. These changes from Caitlyn, I think really maximizing her Dynamax usage in this game has brought her out into a much stronger position moving forward. Lapras is going to be the Pokemon left for Roberto. Uh, going to be a little bit nicer to have a late game Dynamax if, it, if Roberto needs it, uh, but it is still two versus three, so you don't have a great Parish Song, Parish Trap endgame, if that is what you were hoping to go for in this game, because the uh, Pokemon for Caitlyn, ha she has three, so she can swap them in and out and possibly change that, so you have to kind of go for something like a Gigantamax Resonance and just try and bulk up your Zacian as much as possible and do enough chip damage with Max Hailstorms and Max Geysers, I think, to kind of get yourself into the position to move a little bit more comfortably, especially around the Zacian on Caitlyn's side that you know is going to need at least two hits to knock it out. Absolutely. Um, and then right now, I ho I'm i hoping that plus one airstream was enough for the opposing uh, opposing Lando to be faster than the other station, because I think that will be pretty, pretty important. B-Blade doing a lot of damage. That's actually really, really... Was that a crit or... Oh, that's just... No, I think that's just that plus one right there. Oh, goodness gracious. That, that plus one airstream was enough, and Lapras is just knocked out now. It, it, Wow, how the tables turn. That is absolutely insane. That is a really well done turn from Caitlyn, able to use that Dynamax Airstream to allow that Landorus, like you said, to become faster than the Zacian on Roberto's side. So able to knock out that Lapras and still handle taking a Behemoth Blade to boot. So you can go for something like a Rock Slide, you can go for something like an Earthquake and then accompany it with a Protect on your Zacian to just get some extra damage down. This Zacian on Roberto's side can only attack one Pokemon at, the at a time. So you have to deal with whatever your bigger threat is. And the Zacian is at plus one plus a couple of extra uh, special defense boosts. Not too worried about that as a Zacian. Behemoth Blade though from Caitlyn will be the first move to come out. No protects on her side. Able to do a ton of damage. Brings it down to the bottom 25% of its HP. And this Landorus with U-turn as its final move here. Not enough to knock it out, but will allow Caitlyn to swap back for her final Pokemon. I'm not sure if they, like, Caitlyn should have showed that Zapdos was their last Pokemon here. I think EQ was probably safer, um, but I, I do think Caitlyn will probably have this game. 
Yeah, that B-Blade did nothing. Yeah, especially through that Reflect, not able to get a ton of damage off Zapdos, showing exactly how bulky it is and showing that it is running those leftovers. So an important piece of info for Roberto to have. I almost wonder if the Landorus used that U-turn to not worry too much about a Rock Slide miss and then get knocked out by a Behemoth Blade if this was the safer play for the Zapdos to come in and just get a move in that is 100% accurate, especially while you're moving faster. Uh, Behemoth Blade from Zacian should wrap this game up for Caitlyn. G Caitlyn is going to be bringing this to a Game 3 for our final round of the day. So a very exciting game. Uh, both these players, both running that Zacian Calyrex Shadow Rider, but two incredibly different teams. Yeah, and, and right now, it, this is this just shows that I'm really excited. I mean, it, it's their do and die game. Um, they cool. They it, it, and going to game three is just it's just an extra hype to it. And Caitlyn show that she was able to adapt and, and did like I said that she played that game really really well. Uh, and maybe if Ruxley had, had missed, it might have hurt a little. But I do personally think that Caitlyn, like, the late Dynamax probably was a little too late. Maybe they, maybe like Roberto, they might have needed to bring Lapras a little early just so have the, have the screens early so like could soak a little bit more of the damage. But yeah, I, I really like the change of adaptations and it's time to see if Roberto does the same thing or also adapts. Yeah, I would be really interested to see if Roberto uh, maybe once again leads that Lapras. Like, we uh, we saw the Calyrex lead and we saw the Zacian lead. Almost wondering if you lead that Lapras and get that G-Max Resonance up early so that that rest of your Pokémon in your party have the benefit of that uh, of that bare minimum five turns of both a Reflect and a Light Screen. You know, whereas the Pokémon on... Excuse me, the Pokemon on Kate's side have to have Grimstone go through two turns of it. And Grimstone, you can see, is holding that lagging tail as well. Something that we haven't really mentioned yet, which is why, even if it was running with Prankster, it wasn't able to get those moves off as fast. So possibly trying to go for some sort of trick shenanigans. Uh, we are dealing a little bit with a little bit of lag here on our part. So... Uh, just be a bit patient with us as we're jumping from screen to screen. Landorus and Talonflame are the lead for Kate, while Indeedee and Lapras are the lead for Roberto. Change from Roberto. Absolutely, like Lapras was so good for uh, game one. Getting that scream early. Follow me. Absolutely, like, so good. You know that now, at least it takes two... Um, it takes at least two Max Quakes for you to actually... Uh, knock out that in DD. So, oh, whoa! Did I? I think I saw Kaylin Dynamax Talonflame. I would not be surprised if you're going for something like a Max Airstream here, worried about losing some HP and losing your Gale Wings priority if need be. Um, again, also, if you guys are seeing lag, it's not. It's not. Uh, it's just some feedback from the players. But we should be all sorted at this point. Dynamax Talonflame, though, is a really interesting Pokemon to bring out once again. We saw that it was only able to utilize one turn of Dynamax in game one, uh, but maybe it'll be able to make use of all three while Roberto here also going for a Dynamax, possibly assuming it's that Gigantamax Landorus. Again, I was wrong in game one. Okay, Gigantamax Lapras, I mean. But here it is once again coming out for this game three. We've seen it put in a ton of work in that game one and it possibly letting those G-Max resonances fly early is going to be really important. Helping Hand in DD is going to be able to boost the power of this Ice-type move as well. Max Flare from Talonflame, though, going to be able to go first into this Lapras, going for a super effective move, but it does not do really all that much damage whatsoever. Most importantly, sets the sun, so it may decrease the power of something like a Max Geyser, but you have to assume that there may be something like that G-Max resonance. U-turn, though, into the Ndidi does about 50% of its HP and allows this Landorus to fly backwards and go back into the party and possibly allow for a switch. Uh, while the Ndidi is able to eat its Citrus Berry, gain back about a third of its HP there, 30% of its HP, and allow Caitlyn to change up her positioning in this turn one to something that she may feel a little bit more favorable about. Yeah, I think the, the stream lag a little bit when Grimmsnarl got selected. I wasn't sure if Caitlyn actually broke Grimmsnarl, and I think this swap is really, really... Whoa! Was that a crit? No, that's that helping hand boost. Oh, it was, oh, I guess, as was well. Like, I, I'm. I want to say that crit really matter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's no way this Lapras will have KO the Green Snarl. I, I, I really think that even with helping out, I feel like it really, really matter. This is. I think that's definitely really cool. huge. 
Roberto yeah, just uh, removed all means of bulk for Caitlyn's team. So Zashin here coming in without a light screen and without a reflect to back it up. The good news is the sun is set up. So if a max uh, geyser does come out, it's going to be pretty weak. We see a double into uh, Lapras. And I, I think that's the most sense, right? And Didi probably is just going to help follow me or helping hand. At this point, you just want to... Caitlyn just wants to play clutch up at, at this point. Yeah, I think Caitlyn is definitely on the back foot, like you say, having to work around losing that Grim Snarl, which was so so pivotal early on to keep up with the screens that the Lapras has been throwing out. But now Lapras taking these max flares like an absolute champ, Zashin going for a Behemoth Blade. We saw how much damage this did in that last game, so it's going to be really important to see if you can get this knockout as the Lapras is... Yes, it is! It is enough to get the knockout on that Lapras, so it is really important now for Caitlyn to be able to continue to pick up steam here, allow this Zashin to steamroll through the rest of the Pokemon on Roberto's side. Expanding force from this Ndidi into both these Pokemon really doesn't do a whole lot there. Maybe 10% on the Zacian, maybe 15 on the Dynamax Talonflame. So really interesting to see if this Max, um, if this Calyrex here is going to be able to go for something that can do enough damage to both of these Pokemon on Caitlyn's side, especially if you're working with something like another Max Airstream. I believe even... Oh, oh Caitlyn is, is protecting... Um... I probably trying to preserve Talonflame. There, there is a ch chance that Talonflame gets KO here, um, even on Dynamax, just because indeed it could easily go for a potential helping hand. But this is this is a little scary. Need to get the the read right. Um, Calyrex is probably the most scary thing in this team, and if you can get it out of the way, um, oh, yep, went for the helping hand. Yeah, that helping hand from Ndidi going to be helping with this Astral Barrage from Calyrex. Sorry, Calyrex actually going for Expanding Force here as its double target move, not using that Astral Barrage. Going to do enough damage to knock out this Talonflame here, thanks to that helping hand from its partner Ndidi, making use of the Psychic Terrain, allowing itself to get an extra Grim Nay boost, boosting it up to plus one. Zashi going to be able to go for a Behemoth Blade here. There is no follow me, so we'll be able to attack whichever target it prioritized, which is still that Ndidi. Ndidi does not get knocked out, though, brings it once again again to the bottom 25% of its HP. It already ate that Citrus Berry, so it's not going to be able to gain any more health back this turn. Caitlyn is going to be able to bring back that Landorus that we saw earlier in turn one that had you turned away into the Grim Snarl. Intimidate not doing anything to either of these two Pokemon that are definitely special attackers. And this is a little dicey, I think, mostly because there's no Protect on the Sajan and the Calyrex is Shadow is uh, is Sash. And yeah, another helping hand. Yeah, another okay. helping hand. Like you said, this is still going to do a ton of damage. Astro Barrage will be the choice this time, especially with this plus one Grim Nay boost. Should be able to pretty comfortably knock out this Sash in here. Brings the Landorus down to only 15 HP. So 15 HP is just going to be all this Landorus has. Going to have to go for something like some absolutely insane Rock Slide crits and flinches or Earthquake knockouts here. This Calyrex, like you said, is um is a excuse me is uh focus sash so it would take two hits anyway i think this is probably going to be the end of caitlin's run and brings roberto out to be able to have uh, to be able to move on to top cut as we end this game three i don't know if there's much caitlin can do to bring it back but with lander and rock slide there's always a way uh, yeah, I mean, if only the, the Lando was a little bit faster, the, there could be a double crit chance, but it, it's still really... I, I like the adaptations from both teams. Uh, Roberto Roberto did, adapt, did the right thing, setting the screens, and because of the crit that happened to Caitlyn, uh, she couldn't get the screens back herself. And I think that really hurt like the screen battle, just because at this point it was 